And we begin this Sunday morning with the threat of communist China, now inside the gates of America. The nation's governors now are standing up in the name of national security amidst President Biden's soft approach on communist China, despite its provocations. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is pushing to ban Chinese real estate investments in Florida and CCP-backed social media app TikTok. In South Dakota, Governor Kristi Noem is leading a charge to block China from buying valuable farmland. Her efforts hindered last week with the state legislature rejecting the proposal under pressure from the state's major agricultural groups, afraid of China retaliation. And then in Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin poised to sign a bill to ban the CCP from buying farmland and bar TikTok on state-owned devices. Last month, Governor Youngkin pulled the state out of the running for a new $3.5 billion Ford Motor plant because the electric vehicle battery factory would have used technology made in China. Joining us now to examine the threat to U.S. national security is the man himself, Virginia Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin. Governor, thanks very much for being with us this morning. Yeah, good morning, Maria. And the issues you've just raised are critical national security issues. And let's just be clear. China has one goal, world domination, to do it at the expense of the United States. They're using every avenue possible from, yes, saber rattling with their military to surveillance with balloons and TikTok, and, uh, and from trying to infiltrate our economic supply chain by using Trojan horse relationships like the one they have engineered with Ford Motor Company. And uh, in Virginia, we're standing up strong. We're going to make what? sure that our agricultural farmland is not purchased by the CCP. Uh, we've got a bill now through on a bipartisan basis that I will sign that will keep China from buying our agricultural farmland, particularly next to our nationally strategic assets like the Pentagon and Quantico and the largest naval base in the world. We're going to make sure that we keep these national strategic assets safe. We're going to make sure that TikTok isn't going to be used for surveillance with Virginia government employees. And Maria, we, we went to work to fully understand what was going on between Ford and a company called Cattle that is not just influenced, but, but controlled by the Chinese Communist Party and to not allow them to use a Trojan horse structure to gain access to taxpayer incentives that were put into the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, this is using taxpayer money to further and enrich a Chinese company at the expense of America. And it's just not happening in Virginia. And I'm proud to say that we now see bipartisan legislators standing up on this issue and asking very difficult questions, as they should. This should be American supply chain that's trusted, not one that's outsourced to the Chinese Communist Party. Well, it's just incredible how much reliance America has on China. And we saw that through the pandemic when the propaganda sites like Xinhua News and the Global Times came out and said, well, maybe we shouldn't send the prescription drugs to America that they need. So, Governor, what do you want to say to people like Tim Cook, Ray Dalio, Warren Buffett, who want to double down on investing in China and in, in, in doing so, expanding the, the strength of the CCP, funding their expansion? You've used your business acumen to actually make change. What about those CEOs that are looking at dollar signs in China, selling to the 1.4 billion person population? Maria, th through my business experience, I have, I've actually sat across the table from leaders of the Chinese Communist Party. I know exactly what they're doing, and they are using their economic coercion tactics in order to gain access to our supply chain. And that's exactly what they did to General Motors back in 2016 when they demanded General Motors dump Korean battery manufacturer uh, supplier in China and replace it with cattle, this Chinese manufacturer. We just need to have everybody wake up and understand that economic, economic security for the United States is critical. And in these most important industries, like semiconductors, like EVs, like, like uh, solar panel manufacturers, like all of the technologies that drive them, we must own that supply chain. In addition to our pharmaceutical supply chain, it must be American-owned, American-domiciled. Otherwise, we will continue to watch the Biden administration in pursuit of their green agenda sell out to the Communist Chinese Party. And we can't let it happen.
Well, it's unbelievable to me that we've had such a soft response. They obviously have a plan, They and it was meticulous. They had that balloon fly over our uh, installations, our military installations, nuclear installations, and you're telling me about cattle wanting to set up shop right near the Pentagon in Virginia, right near Quantico. Tell me more about that. How are they doing this? Well, first of all, the Biden administration is allowing them to do it, and this is... This is the big realization that I hope that our congressional oversight committees, American CEOs, and American people like Virginians now fully understand that the liberal agenda will stand up to China until it gets uncomfortable. And the minute that, the minute that it encroaches on their green agenda or their, their, their liberal agenda to take donations from, from China into our universities and other places, they will back down. And we must be tough here. We have to recognize that the ultimate objective of the Chinese, as I said, is world domination at the expense of the United States. They will continue to use every economic lever they can in order to do that. And that includes buying our agricultural, uh, agricultural land and farmland. That includes invading, invading the economic supply chains of these most critical industries. I mean, they've been up to this for, for decades. Yeah. And we've turned a blind eye. And now we see the decade-long plan to dominate the, 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 uh, the, the uh, uh, minerals industry, to dominate yeah. the supply chain for electric vehicles, for solar panels, to dominate the supply chain for pharmaceuticals, to dominate the supply chain for next-gen uh, computer science and technical uh, supply chain. This is what they're up to. We stood up, when, and we stood up when they were trying to dominate the 5G supply yeah. chain and created trusted 5G capabilities. We have to do the same thing in these other most important supply chains. Well, we know that they are also infiltrating our education system. You've done an incredible job in terms of education in Virginia. But we know what the CCB has done on the university level. Is this going to come up next week? Joe Biden is headed to Virginia. Um, he still has not been to Ohio, and East Palestinian uh, citizens are still reeling uh, with those cancer-causing chemicals in the ground, water, and air, apparently. Well, it, Joe Biden's been to Ukraine. Now he's coming to Virginia. He has yet to go to Ohio. And he wants to talk about health care. Why doesn't he go someplace where people actually have real health concerns that are driving them to, to worry about not just, not just uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, impacts of this horrific train crash, but the long-term impacts with cancer threats and et cetera. Uh, this is a moment for leaders to lead. And Joe Biden needs to lead here. And I just think it's, it's really, really uh, unbelievable that he is yet to go to Ohio and support these people that need the help. You know, the reality is when it comes to schools, Maria, um, we led in Virginia in 2021 and demonstrated that schools and parents are a Republican winning platform. And it's not because it's Republicans against Democrats. It's about empowering parents and recognizing that all parents, whether they're Republicans or Democrats, care about their children. And we've watched the liberals press children out of out of their parents' lives and try to try to intercede with bureaucrats and politicians to teach them uh, to teach them what to think as opposed to how to think. And we have been standing up in Virginia, empowering parents, making sure that our curriculum is focused on teaching kids uh, uh, teaching kids how to think, not what to think. Raising mm. the the bar so that we can raise the ceiling and the floor, and and making sure that. We, in fact, are aware of, of what's going on in our schools. We just had yeah. Fairfax County uh, purposely, purposely exclude parents from being told that their children had earned national merit accommodations because they didn't want kids to feel bad. Wow. We're watching equity stand in the place of excellence. And in Virginia, we are standing up to make sure that our children and their parents get an, ex an exceptional education and that parents are empowered not just with a seat yeah. at the table, but a seat at the head of the table. Well, real quick, you know, you've stood up to the teachers' unions. Joe Biden actually worked with them and had them making decisions during COVID uh, in, in complete opposite to what you've done in terms of leadership. Governor, I know you have not announced a run for presidents yet, but are you planning to join the 2024 field? Maria, I continue to be very humbled when uh, this question is asked to me, and I continue to be very focused on Virginia. 
we have got a big budget to negotiate. You know, one of the one of the realities in Virginia is we've managed well. We got a three point six billion dollar surplus. That's the taxpayer money that doesn't belong to government. And we've got tough negotiations to, to implement tax cuts and invest in the most important things that we've identified, okay. education, law enforcement, behavioral health. My eyes right now are really on Virginia, and uh, we've got a lot of good work to do here. All right, Governor. It's great to talk with you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll be watching. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.